by the oh. microphone. There we go. Hi, Rachel. Hi. So I guess the first thing I would love to hear about is tell me what's going on in your life with Brendan, with Adora, with Job, where you're living. What, what's been the latest with you? Oh, gosh. Good question. So I um, – we just bought a townhouse, which is super exciting. It's – um. Our very first purchase, we saved all our money from Big Brother. We've been trying to buy something in California for, like, four, five years, I think. Oh, wow. We, I got the money in 2011. Yeah, but the market's crazy. So, like, it's been hard to get in, to get someone to accept a bid, to close on a house, um, just everything. So, the mar- the real estate market in Los Angeles is insane. So finally, we finally got a townhouse. Yay! Congratulations. So that's our thank you. So that's our big um our big thing, I guess, that we spent our money on. Um and then uh, we have Adora and she's doing really well right now. She's um upstairs crying if you hear her because <laughs> she she's getting teeth, but she's still nursing. So she's biting, so I put her up in the pack and play to take a nap, um, and I feel so bad because she hates the pack and play, but it's all part of training, you should, and it's so hard, and I I hate it, but you have to be a good mom, and putting them for scheduled naps is being a good mom, right? So <laughs> It's always the conflict of giving them what they want versus giving them what's good for them. You're right, and it's so hard. Oh, I just want to give her what's good what she wants. <laughs> yeah, that's what she does. So, I know. about a week ago, we got our cast out. 16 Yay! new players. All new players originally. Yes. Who were your uh, standouts? Who, like, really, did you really like? Did you really dislike? Okay, so I'll talk, like, when this cast was first announced, after their interviews, and since the show started. So, When they were first announced, I was really excited um, about Dominique. I thought she seemed awesome. About Mark, I thought he seemed really great. He loves Brendan. So I was like, oh, he's going to – yeah. So I was like, oh, he's going to be a standout. Um, I was really excited about – let me think, who else? Oh, uh, Rodeo. What's his name? Oh, my God. Jason? Uh, Yeah, Jason. We can call him Rodeo. Everyone knows him about Rodeo, right? (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, I really like them all for different reasons, and that's – actually really interesting because I normally am not excited about anyone but well I'm excited about I'm always excited about everyone but but the past few years I haven't been like overly excited about just like one or two people you know but this season it seems like they're going to be like they would be really really great players and I was really excited I really like Jessica standing out from reading her interviews because she said you know she wants to play like Janelle, and she, you know, in some of her interviews, she said she wants to be super competitive. Um, so I thought that was cool, and I really wanted to like her. Um, That's interesting that you're naming people yeah. for, who are so far on completely opposite sides of the house, because the first two names that you said were Dominique and Mark, yeah. who are by no stretch of the imagination of working together right now. Yeah, oh, I know, which is, isn't that funny? Um, and then, yeah, I think that's like my, oh, and Christmas. I was really excited about her. She seems really awesome. And she seems really, um, she seems smart, but competitive, which I don't think we normally see because we normally see a player that's like really, really smart, like you or like a Vanessa or like a Derek or or Dan, or we see like a player that's really competitive, like me or Janelle. And you're like, oh, they're going to be one or the other. But I think that Christmas seems like she might be bold. Oh. We haven't really seen competitive from her yet, but I'm just guessing she should be. She would be competitive. Um, so I'm hoping that it comes out later on. And then, uh, oh, Raven, I thought she was really cute and bouncy, and I love that she's kind of a nerd, but also really cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was super cute. And then um, Ramsey seems like really fun too. So I was, you know, just all over general. The cast seemed really cool. Um, after Jeff's interviews, I got less excited about Jessica. Um, what did Jessica I say got, that turned you off? Yeah, I think what turned me off that she was saying in Jeff's interviews, uh, I didn't like the whole showman thing. Like, because she said she she was kind of contradicting herself. She said she was going to do a showman and, like, partner with a guy and, like, be super competitive and take it to the end. But then she said she wasn't going to do a showman, and then she said she was again. So I don't know. Like, she didn't – she really sounds like she doesn't have her mind made up. Like, it, she was kept saying things that really contradicted herself. 
And um, I thought that that was kind of not as exciting. Um, then who else did it really turn me off in Justin? I don't remember, but then now that the show has started, I'm like, uh, I really feel like Christmas. And I thought she handled herself really well being on the block. And I thought that on Monday, I'm mean, yeah. sorry, Wednesday. And I thought that, um, I thought she was really composed, but she also wasn't showing all her cards. Personally, I wish she would have decided to battle it out um, because then we probably would have gotten rid of Jillian, and I'm not a huge into Jillian anyways. But, um, and I was, I kind of wanted to see Cameron a little bit more. Um, but, you know, Christmas had, she had to make that decision on the spot, and I think that's probably a really hard decision to make your first night. And exactly. she probably did know, yeah, and she probably did know she had made some good first impressions. But I also kind of think that it was ballsy of her because she's, um, she came in right off the bat and was like, oh, yeah, I own a CrossFit gym. Um, and so for me, I probably would have evicted her because I would have voted her out because she seems like, you know, a triple threat. Like she's so very you, think, likable, but you she's think they made the wrong call voting out Cameron? I do. I think they should have probably voted out Christmas because she seems smart but competitive. So I think Cameron made so many mistakes that night that I think that it's his fault and he got voted out. You know, I think that like, I was listening to Rob has a podcast and everything they were saying was true because Cameron had so many chances to save himself that night and he didn't. And so for um, me being a fan, like, I mean, he even said he forgot the clues truly said, like, honestly, if it was my, if I was in that situation and I wasn't going to win that competition, I probably would have gotten off first because she said the red apples are safe, you know? So it's like, you have a 50% chance right there. You know, like what Josh did, like he was like, I have a 50% chance to get one of these safe apples. I'm going to jump off, you know? So right. I think, I think that was smart. Um, Alex really stood out to me. I wasn't a fan of her going into the show from her interviews, but after watching her, she really excited me. Like I thought on Wednesday, she was super cute and bubbly in the diary room, but she was also competitive. And I kind of like how she's talking about being a gamer She's like, I don't care if I'm with the outcasts, if I'm with cool kids. She's like, I just want to play the game. I thought that was cool, too, you know? Um, I like that she wasn't really overly, like, trying to um, talk about herself either. I noticed, like, when mm -hmm. um, I think Ramsey's run into them and was like, you seem like a super fan. You seem cool. You seem like this. She was just kind of like, okay, like, listening. You know, I thought that was really smart. So I thought Alex really stood out to me. And then Cody, man, I wasn't sure about him in the interviews because I think in the interviews he kind of seems bland, but, you know, he's the, the guy that always probably comes off a little bland. Mm -hmm. But then on the show, man, he is like a lack of personality, and he is kind of like the opposite of a good personality. Like, he's kind of the villain. He's already becoming this villain, and it's so early on. He had to win that first competition. He had to win the first eight to eight. And he, it wasn't because of anything else, but he wanted to prove to Paul that he didn't need him to, like, be safe, you know? And it's I almost do. like he's, yeah, and it's almost like he's doing this on purpose to try to be, like, the macho man, like, I don't need Paul. Oh, Paul's stupid. I can't stand him because he's a returning vet, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think his attitude is going to get him in trouble. Um, and then I'm super disappointed about Jessica because now she's in this showman's with Josh. I mean, not Josh, sorry, with um, Cody, Mom. and it's like, I'm all pro showmances, but it's like, and Brendan and I got into showmance super early on, but I heard, Brendan was telling me, like, they're all over each other. Like, Brendan and I, even that early on, we were on the block together, so it forced us kind of to be a little bit even closer, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we had been nominated together, we had... um and we were we were friends. We hadn't really even started our showmance until we were nominated together, and then that pushed us closer together. Um, and Brendan and I kind of had a fight for our lives in the game. We had to come up with a plan, and I think we were more of like, I hate to say the underdogs, but I think we were kind of more of the underdogs because everyone in the house wanted to get rid of us. Um, so we were fighting for our lives the whole time, where it seems like with Jessica and, and um, Cody, they're just gonna, they're like just going to be, you know, like I think he's gonna win a lot of competitions. I don't see I don't see her winning a lot of competitions. I think she was all talk about being competitive. I Jessica. think she's gonna be more like Jessica, right. What did I say? Sorry. I don't No, I just wanted to make yeah. you're saying Cody has a lot of competition potential. Jessica does not. 
Exactly. Jessica, I don't think, has a lot of comp- competition potential. I think she was just saying that. Um, I see Alex as being uh, the more competitive female this season. Um, and then I see Christmas kind of bringing it up in the end, uh, toward the end of the season. I think Christmas will set up her competitiveness a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Jessica and Cody on the live feeds at all. I mean, I think we're all kind of turned off on by their showman. Um, I think Raven seems really cute. She has a lot of potential, and I like watching her on the show. She's super adorable. She's really fun. Um, Matt, who I wasn't into at all, he seems very likable, and Mark seems very likable. So I think I could really see myself rooting for a, a Matt and a Raven. Um, I could see myself rooting for Christmas. I can see myself rooting for an Alex and a Ramsey's. Um, Jillian, I can give or take, you know. She doesn't have a lot of personality. Now that Megan's gone, I think that, like, we're going to see a lot of changes in the game. So I'm sure you're going to talk about that, too. Yeah. But, like, I don't think anyone's walked off the show. I think someone quit in Season 9. And then she got uh, evicted. Or, sorry? Well, as of right now, the latest on Snapchat is she's saying she didn't walk. So I'm not completely sure at this point that it was her choice to leave. Mm. There's a lot she's of She's saying she didn't like, walk? She just had a snap saying she didn't choose to leave. I don't know the details. I'm not confirming anything. But I don't think um. anyone right now is completely sure the circumstances that she left. Weird, because Global TV and um, they're an affiliate of CBS, obviously. They did that article about how she left. Yeah, but that doesn't mean she walked. That's true. She could have, it's possible she was expelled. Um, I wonder if she did that to get her expelled. I mean, that's to do something really bad. Yes, obviously, because they don't want to mess up the game like that. But either way, you just brought in a whole bunch of loose ends that I want to dig into a little bit. First, okay. you were talking about a lot of mistakes that particularly uh, Cameron made on the first night. So, and, mm-hmm. and something that stood out to me, and I want your opinion, on the people who did and did not choose to go for the $25,000 temptation, because less than half the yeah. class went for it. What would you Isn't have that done weird? in that situation? I was shocked. Would you have gone for it? I mean, honestly... If I was playing All Stars, it might be different, but you know that someone's going for it. You know someone else is going for it. So, yeah, why not go for it? The thing is with Big Brother, it's like a situation like that where you're anonymous, where you know someone else is going for it. It's like I would have done a Dr. Will, gone for it, and gone in the diary room and said, I just made $25,000. I mean, why wouldn't you at this point, you know? And I was surprised that some of the cast didn't go for it because I was like, dude, you know, someone else is going to go for it. So why wouldn't you Why wouldn't you just go for it, too? Like, who cares? Nobody's even going to find out if you went for it or not, you know? Exactly. The only the only way I wouldn't go for it is if it was a, like, a Pandora's box. That's the only way. Because then you have the fate in your hands. But otherwise, wouldn't you have the fate with you and up to, like, you know, 16 other people and... By the way, uh, 16 newbies and it's $25,000, you're not, no one's going to find out. Yeah, of course I'm going to go for it. I, I, I would have done the same thing, which surprised me why so many people did not. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was shocked that so many people didn't. So I'm, I'm glad that wasn't just me. Now here's no. that, and all of that first temptation led into our first twist, which was the swap. My first question mm-hmm. about that, what do you think about the choice? of Paul. Is that a choice um, you like? Is that a well, choice you don't like? I like it, and I think it makes sense. Uh, so this is my thing. I read Allison Rich's um, interview about why Paul, and I can totally see what they did, because they're like, we don't want it to be someone that was too long ago that nobody really remembers, and we want it to be someone that was like, um, you know, that the fans all love, that we could see coming back for redemption, that everyone would be excited about. Um so I think it totally makes sense. With that being said, I also kind of think that this whole gimmicky thing of bringing one person back or bringing four people back, it's like, let's just do an all-stars or all newbies. We had 16 newbies and you brought one person back. I don't get that. Like, if I was the one brought back, I would be so mad because that sucks. Like, it would suck oh, yeah. to a house being the one, new, the one vet thinking, like, oh, my God, they're going to come after me no matter what. <laughs> I mean... 
I'm surprised that more people haven't just said they want to go after him. It seems like that everyone's okay with him being the only vet. But I think that'll change. That happens um, every year. Everyone yeah, has to work with the year. vet. Every time. Right. <laughs> and I think I think as a newbie, I would have worked with a vet 100%. But I think they should, at this point, like, either give us an all-star season or just get all new people. You know what I mean? It's like, don't bring you back You want one or the other. You don't person. like the, 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 the repeated mix season. No, exactly. And we've, I mean, we've seen it now since, since season 13. Like, that's a long time to continuously bring people back, you know? Yes. I mean, I guess season 15, technically, they didn't bring anyone back, right? So I think it's time for them to do all-stars. But, or just to oh. do no stars. <laughs> like one or the other. Um, one or the other, yeah. And then I do really like, I really do like that Paul is on it. Um, I'm a big Paul fan, but I think he's going to have an uphill battle with the house and I think also with the fans because he's coming back and we saw this Paul that was kind of cocky last year that we already liked, but we like we liked him. But then now I'm worried that because he's going to be on, he's going to not be the underdog. Like we really started to root for him in the end because it was him and Victor and they were both like, the you know, um, Right, they were the underdogs, and you wanted to root for them, and you were, honestly, by that point, we were all sick of Nicole. Uh, and, you know, I think that this season, I don't think Paul's going to be an underdog. He might. The house might flip on him, but I doubt it. At, like, this house, they're all kissing his butt. So, and he's kind of, like, already coming on, like, he's being a little bit too much and a little bit too, like, um, like, I'm just worried, because sometimes when you have a fan favorite go in the next time we don't like them as much that's so, been happening a lot recently yes yeah um so i don't know i think it's going to be it's going to be hard for paul i think paul. Paul, paul battle with both, right. but paul has been given two advantages though which i think have helped which are going to be a blessing or a curse it could go either way first right. that bracelet power was oh, crazy was so that was crazy. I didn't like it. <laughs> well, here's the question. When you just meet these people, they're all new to you. How right. would what would be how would you have approached deciding which eight strangers to give these bracelets to? What's the right way yeah, to approach I, that? I hate that. I have that no idea because, what I would have done. Right, neither do I. And I don't think he can have an idea of what to do because he was like, I don't know how long they gave him to to talk to people, but like he called people in as it, he was basically the first HOH, but he was only giving eight mm-hmm. people safety. So it's like, you're the first HOH, but instead of getting blood on your hands with two people, you're getting blood on your hands with eight people. Mm-hmm. Um, now, are they going to be pissed? Maybe, maybe not, you know? I mean, obviously, like, he risked it with a Cody, and he risked it with um, Josh, because I think Josh is not, you know, even though it came across in the episode, he's like, that's okay, I get it, I get Paul. But, like, I don't think he is happy because that's always going to be in the back of your head. The first thing, you know, everyone looks for a, any reason to get mad at someone on Big Brother. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think that he approached it as good as he could because I think he was he was smart with, um, you know, like, the people that came in and that were like, I'm a super fan, I'm this and that. Then I think he, he, did, he didn't pick them. And I think that was kind of smart because it was kind of like, Okay, well, if you're a super fan, then you're gonna like me, if, even if I don't pick you. So you're not, or you won't be as mm-hmm. mad at me. Yeah. So I think he kind of had to do what he he could, you know. Um, but I also don't like. I just don't like that he's the first, that he's the only vet they brought back. Um, but then, I didn't like the friendship bracelet thing. I thought that was super stupid. I mean, I don't know. It was not my favorite way that they did that. And um, so I think. I don't know. I guess they had to give give him some sort of, like, way to – some sort of advantage coming in being the only vet so that he's not at a disadvantage. Maybe. Being the one that's maybe targeted that's what out. Thinking. Right. Exactly. Well, if you didn't like bracelets, what did you thought about this competition where essentially your performance didn't matter? It was the luck of drawing the correct apple. Yeah. That – I thought – that was so weird. So, if he, okay, so if it was me and, like, with Cameron, he 
heard the clues and then he forgot them. So that was dumb. That was his fault. Um, and then you, the luck of drawing the correct apple, I get it. But by the same token, like their performance kind of did matter because Cody was safe, you know? So he won his own safety. So one person could win their own safety. And then the other part was like the apples. Well, if you listen to the clues, you have like a 50% chance of, you know, being safe. Like you're more likely to get, you know, safety from the red apple. Like, okay, then I'm going to pick up the red apple and maybe I'm going to fall first if I know I'm not going to win this competition. That would be my process of thought because then I would be thinking, okay, well, if I can get safety, why would I try to compete if I'm not going to win? Um, so I, I thought it was interesting. Um, but then come to the eighth away. Yeah. The team thing. And by the way, I love that Josh took safety. I love it. I think as a fan, like, by the way, I would hate to live in the house with him. I would be so mad at him too. But as a fan, like, who does not love watching that? You know what I mean? <laughs> We're all, like, talking about it. So, speaking yeah. of the Josh-Megan drama, which you just touched on, yeah, I'm going to draw a parallel. You agree to disagree with it. What Josh was doing okay. to Megan kind of reminded me of the way you were going after Danielle after that whole blow-up happened when Danielle was hurting on you and Jeff and Jordan. And the way mm-hmm. of you were trying to get under her skin and essentially stop her from being able to function so that like, you get her out as long as the rest of the newbies. Right. Does you, are there any parallels between you and Danielle and what Josh is trying to do to Megan, seeing her on the opposite side and doing a similar thing? So I think that, well, with, Me- with Danielle and I, it was also a lot more personal because it was, we'd already been friends for so long. Like, I'm, I'm not sure, like, I'm kind of confused because – I couldn't tell by the show, is this, did this fight happen on the first night or did the fight happen like the first week? Because that was, I don't know if anyone else can like figure that out, but I don't understand where all this like animosity started. came from, from him. Right, where it started. And we didn't see the live feeds and they didn't show us. They just showed the fight. So I'm confused. I'm a little confused. So it's hard for me to judge it 100% because, yeah, totally a strategy in Big Brother is getting under someone else's skin when you're mad at them, you know, and especially like when Danielle turned on all the vets and I didn't want her to win because if she was going to win, then the first person she's coming after is me and, and Brendan, you know? Exactly. So, so Danielle, if we're going, and we were going into a competition that night, we had an HOH. So I thought that I was like, you know, make her mess up at the competition did not work because she won. <laughs> so maybe Josh should have taken a page out of my book. Um, but I guess it works in his favor since nobody knows what happened to Megan. We're all confused now. It's just she's not. It's just actually. That's so weird. I, I can't imagine her doing anything that was that bad. Like, she didn't come a Willie Hansett, you know? Hmm. Um. So the other big topic I want to touch on and, and, and the – Something that you're known for is you are generally very opposed to throwing competitions ever. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, 100%. So, I hate people that throw comps. Well, uh, so <laughs> tell me about, because that's what I'm here for you, because I'm on the opposite end of that spectrum. Mm-hmm. Um, my fear with, always with winning early comps and putting that attention to your is that it makes you a bigger threat and a bigger target. And that puts you in a position where you have to fight later on the game. Throughout 13, Mm -hmm. you had to fight. Why do you prefer the fighting technique, or where am I wrong? No, I think you're right. And you know what? I think it's looking when you explain it like that. It's silly. But as a fan of the show, I I like to watch people that are competing their hearts out, that are fighting like Victor, like like what I did, like what Janelle did. Um, I like to watch that as a fan, but I think you are right. I mean, I think it is hard because then you're right. You do have to compete the whole rest of the season and you have to, like, you have to win a veto or you're not going to get, um, you know, you're not going to get anywhere. People are just going to continuously nominate you and nobody really realistically can win out. You know, I think I, I think I also, as a fan, I've grown to like the people that can throw comps, but also win when they have to. And not the people that just continuously throw, throw, throw. 
because I see exactly where you're saying, where you, what you're saying, and where you're coming from. But um, I just like to watch people compete. So your, your mindset and always wanting to win everything is not from a advancing in the game standpoint, but more of a being someone who the audience would want to cheer for standpoint. I think so. Yeah, I think so. And I think if you do want to advance in the game, that you do have to throw some competitions, or you don't. You shouldn't necessarily always be in power. Because, um, and realistically, you're not because it's Big Brother. I don't know anyone mm-hmm. that can win every competition. Even Victor couldn't do it. Um, so I think that, like, it's a bummer. But how would it How would it be, like, what kind of game would it be if everyone threw every competition? You know what I mean? Like, if we had uh, just a season of, you know, where everyone was just like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I don't want to win, I don't want the power, you know? Then we're going to be like how boring of a season would that be to watch? Like, (laughs) There wouldn't be any drama. No, No, exactly. Like, people sitting around seeing Kumbaya. (laughs) Yeah, that's not a season of Big Brother. Um, Because I noticed Ramsey's even uh, had a diary room in the competition where he was super upset because he was big on wanting to prove himself as a competitor. So that means... Right. so, So that means you also see Ramsey as someone who's fighting not only in the game, but to also be someone who the fans want to root for. I do, and I think that that's why he said that, um, because the first thing I thought when he said that he wanted to prove himself as a competitor, I was like, I mean, Ramsey, you have, like, the whole season. It's the first competition. <laughs> um, but I think I like to see that Ramsey wants to win, you know, and I want to see Ramsey's playing because um, you see, we already know he's a fan, so we already know he's there to, to entertain us, but also to have fun and to play competitively and to win the money. Like, I just I just can't stand it when people are there for summer vacation. I guess that's what it boils down to. Sure. I, I can, that is something I can definitely very much appreciate. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we have, we have Cody win our first HOH. Yeah. Which is, again, something that you can relate to because you had your first HOH. However, yeah. from what I read, you two yeah. approach it from completely opposite standpoints. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically what happened with you is that you saw Portia as someone who was coming to you guys, so you wanted to show her your loyalty by essentially putting up the Hurricanes duo and giving Portia the golden key. You were using it to build a bridge with a future ally in Portia. Exactly, 100%. And what we were doing was that when we were thinking about who to nominate, especially the golden key, the twist was so hard to play with because – you had to nominate a duo. So we were like, okay, well, Keith, he's competitive. And, I mean, at that point, we thought, like, we didn't really know him. So we thought, you know, he's competitive and he isn't, like, into the vets. He's not trying to be to play with the vets. So we are thinking he's going to come after us. And if he's friends with Dominic and he's friends with, you know, Casey and, or Cassie and whoever else, then we've got to get rid of him. And Force is coming to us. You know, saying like, oh, if you guys let me stay and give me the golden key, then I'll be an ally. It was kind of a no brainer, you know? It was like, let's get, let's get Portia on our side and get rid of this other guy who's athletic. Um, and then we'll, you know, win ally over. So sometimes with an HOA, when you win an HOA, you have, and you know this too, Steve, you have to not only think about who you're getting rid of, but who you're keeping in the game. So. To take that and do a complete 180, we have you yeah. building a bridge, as you described. We have Cody coming out saying, I'm naming yeah, you, I Morgan, because like I don't like you. No, yeah. as, as far as he conveyed in his speech, which uh, just from what he said, there is no strategy. There is no long-term thinking. It was simply, I don't like you. And Jillian, I've noticed you're friends with this person I don't like, so I'm putting you up, too. Yeah. I know. I was like, what is he doing? Like, Cody is the weirdest Big Brother player ever. I'm pretty sure he's never watched Big Brother because if he has, then he would know it makes no sense to just come out and say to someone, I don't like you, and I'm going to get rid of you. And by the way, Jillian, I don't like your friend. So by process of, you know, association, I don't like you either. (laughs) So it was like, you're saying that because someone doesn't kiss your butt or you don't think you can work with someone, which is kind of why you end up getting rid of people, but not this early. Like, what? that doesn't make sense. Like, um, 
Yeah, he only likes the hot girls, you know? It seems like he only likes the hot girls. He only likes the bro boys and the hot girls. So, Cody, and he didn't even have to say that. Like, he could have made a nomination saying, oh, you know, Megan, I'm nominating you because, you know, you were last on the Apple or you got the point. I mean, who knows? Like, we all play Big Brother. We can all think of great reasons to not to make something up for a reason why you're nominated. So how much longevity do you see with Cody? Because on one hand, he, you're saying he doesn't have the social game. But on the other hand, right. he does kind of have this alliance around him. How far do you see him going? Dude, I know. It's the craziest thing. I'm thinking he's going to be like a Big Brother Canada. Like we saw in Big Brother Canada where we had Dallas, right? He came in and he came in fiery this past season. And he, he you know, had this alliance. But then the minute the alliance could turn on him, he did, they did. So I'm wondering if the minute his alliance can turn on him, that they're going to turn on him. I just don't know. I guess it just depends on how loyal Matt is. Because I think Mark, I think he'll be loyal. Um, and I don't think Mark will turn on him. But I think Cody's going to stay for a while because he has a, a really strong competitive alliance. And I think there's no reason why... Um, there's no reason why his alliance should not win competitions back to back. You know, I just don't see how they could not stay in power. So, with Cody's alliance very likely saying as power as you power as you have said, Paul's also not an interesting thought that he won the Dennis Temptation. He has the three weeks yep. of safety. So that at least keeps him safe for a short amount of time. But now my fear is he's going to be in that spot where that fourth week he's going to have this giant bullseye because that's the first week he's eligible. Because he was safe for the first eviction because he was the one with the first yep. bracelet. And now he has the next three. What is Paul yeah. need to be doing? Oh, Paul is for sure going to get netted. He needs to spend every single second becoming best friends with everyone. And I think he's trying to do that, but I think he needs to not. Like, he needs to lay low. Paul doesn't know how to lay low. He needs to lay low. He needs to just be in the conversations, listening, being everyone's friend. He needs to just observe and gather information and just use that to talk about, you know, to make these relationships strong because um, otherwise he's totally going to get netted. I mean, we saw that in Big Brother Canada. Like, mm-hmm. Netta got this, this like, uh, power and then by Canada, and then the fourth week she was out. As soon as they could get rid of her, she was out. Mm-hmm. And with Paul, he's starting off with drama. He's the one that told about um, Jessica or the – what I mean, that's what I read online, that he was the one that started – that told Megan said this or something. and then But he's going around telling all these people things and trying to, trying to stir the girls up. And the problem is, is that it's just way too early to try to stir up the girls. And, yes, you have the power right now where you can stay, but that fourth week, they're going to all remember that. I mean, they're mm-hmm. all, and there's going to be less people for them to evict, you know, and the pressure is going to be on by then. And if Paul keeps this up, they're just going to, just going to start to realize where it's all coming from. So he just really mm-hmm. needs to lay low and he doesn't know how to do that. So he needs to just like learn how to do it and just build relationships. So do you think Paul is going to be netted and be able to do that? I don't see him being able to do that, but he could surprise us all. You know, he might have learned from last season what he needs to do um, to win Big Brother. And, you know, we just haven't seen it yet because right now he's talking a lot in the diary rooms and telling us what's going on. So I just am assuming that he's doing that, the stuff he's talking about, he's actually doing and stirring people up. And I think that that, people don't like the pot stirs. It's really fun to watch but it's usually really hard to stay in a position where people want to keep you in the house if you're a posture. I mean, Evil Dick was able to do it, but he was also super manipulative. And people, for some reason, just believed everything that came out of his mouth. So I just think that with Paul, he's going to have, um, if he listens and builds really good relationships, he it shouldn't be as hard, but, you know, Right now, he's just going to have to just build relationships. Okay. Thank you again so much for your time today. I have two more quick questions for you. Just quick. uh, Number one, should, as far as we know, Cameron is still in sequester. 
because we have Megan out in the world and Cameron yeah. sequestered. Should Cameron take Megan's spot? I think so. And I don't think they need to wait for a battle back. I mean, it doesn't make sense. At this point, like, let's put Cameron back in and don't do a battle back, you know? I mean, if that's what the whole, if it's because of the week thing and they needed to have a filler and, you know, bring someone back, let's bring Cameron back right now and not worry about the battle back or whatever. And let's just, you know, play, have Cameron come back and, you know, play. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they think that that would be unfair because someone will He's get a been out of the house week, for maybe. a week. Right. So, and maybe they'll have, maybe it'll be like whoever gets evicted this week can, it will be like this person versus Cameron, um, you know, so maybe that will happen. Um, but I think they should bring someone back sooner than later. Um, and like, you know, since Megan's gone and they're already a person down, like that they weren't expecting, I think they should just bring someone back in. Yeah. And one last thing, who is your current prediction? Not who you want to win. Who do you think is going to win from what we have seen so far? Oh, man, that's tough. No, I don't think Paul's going to win. And I don't think – I think Kevin will be, like, final two because he's hilarious, and I hope that they bring – I don't know why they would get rid of him ever. Um, You know, actually, I think Jason's going to win. Random. Jason? But I – he's the rodeo, right? So I think think he's super likable. All the house guests like him. And he's not a threat. Um, And – He's not in that boys alliance with um, Matt, Cody, and um, Mark. Mark. So I think, yeah, so I think if he's not in the boys alliance, but the boys like him. You know, he's friends. He talks to Mark. He talks to Matt. I don't know if he talks to Cody, but Cody's not staying around. I think Cody will be one of the first to jury or not even make jury. Um, Alex, I think she's so adorable, but I think the house guests, are not into her. Um, I think Ramsey has a good chance at going really far, and he could surprise us all. Um, he could win, but I don't know. That might be. And then I would say Christmas, but I think because that's what I was think I'm predicting Christmas would win this whole time. But I think with the way that the house is going right now, I think that the boys – unless she really sucks up to those three boys. And if they stay in power, um, I'm worried that she's going to, that they're not, they're going to eventually not want to keep her because they seem like, they seem like they want the girls that are kissing their butt. Okay. I, so I was, you're calling a Kevin Jason final two. I think so. Maybe, you know, I, I'm not sure. So but I think my guess, I, I, I thought you were going to say Dominique. Oh, I love Dominique. Yeah, I, would, I do you know, too. I would She's really, wonderful. I, she is wonderful, but I don't know if she has the friends in the house. I don't think she has the alliances. I think that she's on the outside of both of the groups. So you don't think she's going to infiltrate? So you're thinking uh, guys are going to steamroll? Generally speaking, the guys are going to kind of get rid of the girls, and then the outside guys are going to take over the inside guys. That's kind of where you see the season going as a whole. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I do. I 100% think that. I think because the guys, I don't see what, I don't think the girls are competitive enough. Christmas, I don't think is going to step up her competitiveness. Um, And maybe Dominique is competitive and she could stick around. And maybe it would be in her favor to be on the outside of both groups. Um, But I don't even know who she's really friends with right now. Um, I don't, is she in a group at all? Or she's just kind of like floating, in, and not floating, but she's kind of like on know, the outside in the both groups. Yeah, she's on the outside of both groups. I think, right? To to the best of my current understanding, yes. Yeah, and I love her, and I think that could maybe that's a good strategy for this house, um, because you know Kevin, that's how he is. I don't think he's in either group. He's on, and by the way, I don't think he cares. He's not going to ever be in either group. You know, he's going to be on the outside of both groups the whole season, but I don't see why anyone would get rid of him ever. Um, and maybe that's, that's the a, thing I was on the outside of both groups the whole season. Right, exactly. And so I think that that could work in, the, in her favor, but I am worried that if the guys stay in power, they're going to get rid of – they're first they're going to get rid of the girls that don't piss their butts, and then they're going to get rid of the girls 
Um, they're going to keep their showmances around. So Jessica and Raven will be around, and I guess maybe Mark likes Lydia. Um, or Elena, I guess. Mark likes Elena. And uh, I think that maybe they'll keep her around for a while, and then then they'll start to, around jury time, I think that they'll start to turn on each other, and then we'll see the outsiders coming back. So I think they'll keep, so then we'll see. And maybe um, Dominique and Kevin by then will have infiltrated with the other group anyway. So I don't know. We'll see what happens, I guess. All right. It's so oh, hard to predict this easy. This it, it always is. It's fun, too. It's very hard. And personally, I'm almost never right. But it's always fun to think about what happens. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. True. Um, <laughs> thank, so thank you so much for your time. I know you said you had a podcast to get to. Um, and also, best okay. of luck with your townhouse and Adora. Yeah, thank you so much. Awesome. It's always so, uh, great to talk to you, Steve. Yes, you too, Rachel. Have a good evening.